Okay, now, before I go off on a rant, I just need to let you guys know, this is not me saying I disagree with the situation with Kwame Brown. This is not me saying that. This is me saying, oh, now y'all want to fuck with Kwame Brown, right? And it proved, it's like a big, gigantic red flag. It's like, you. it, it proves a point. That no matter how successful a brother try to be, no matter how humble he tries to be, he will not be respected, appreciated at all until he shows you how niggerish he is. Okay? And that's as clear cut as I can say it and as it can get for you in this situation. It goes to show everybody is all about this dope dominant alpha thing and just being loud and boisterous. A lot of people do it for gesturing. A lot of people, like he had to tell you, like, look, a lot of people have checked me in situations and I ain't go off about it. I ain't go cry about it, but you're not going to disrespect me. So, I look at it like this as a whole overall black eye on how black people handle situations when it comes to, uh, especially when it comes to uh, interaction with, with one another. It used to be that shit can get handled like that and you can actually talk about it to somebody and like yo so I heard this happen to you man bro you alright man this is I was told this and stuff I ain't want to speak on it because if I spoke on something like that without knowing all this shit what would I know that'd be rude yo I'm a grown ass man I ain't gonna speak on shit I don't know about and stuff I'm gonna you know be cool tell me what's going on man because I'm hearing things and I don't believe I don't know what to believe. I'm gonna go to the horse's mouth. Nah. Now that you I guess it. Now that you heard it from the horse's mouth, people are like, oh fuck with Kwame Brown. But it's the way he had to come out. He had to come out basically on some pro black, yo, I'll bust your shit type of perspective. Calling niggas punks and shit like that. It's the way he had to come out. It ain't I'm not mad at he him defend himself. I'm glad that he did. It's just that the fact that it's the reaction that I'm mad about. Because of the way he came across, the way he came at it is how now all of you motherfuckers uh, got, you're fucking catching hard-ons and shit over this whole thing. Nobody was talking about this guy. Yeah, I was treating him like he was just any other bus. And like I said, I got to reiterate, this isn't me saying he needs to just go back to being obscurity. He's a bus, this, that, and the other. No, I didn't really follow his basketball career like that to be even caring about it. I'm just knowing that people used him as the butt of jokes for years. Listening to people like Chris Broussard, Stephen A. Smith, Jason Whitlock. Fucking now Steven Jackson and Matt Barnes Who he had some words for um, The Breakfast Club Who he had words for And you know Breakfast Club has been in some shit lately You know From the whole situation with the image consultant To this situation with Kwame Brown And various others And I like that Kwame Brown Called out the whole situation With Charlemagne about that girl I, I like that he called that out. Like he he brought facts to the situation. Like don't throw stones and hide your hands, which is an expression he used in his videos, and it's an expression that one of the people I'm subscribed to uses as well. Uh, La Confidential, aka Kid Organic, used the same shit. And I'm like, yo, me, it's like don't throw stones and live in a glass house. Pretty much the same thing. Don't throw. Don't be. Mud flinging, talking shit about people in your house and your foundation is as fragile as glass. And if somebody throws stones back at that bitch, it's going to shatter. That's what we mean. 
So this whole situation, how people are riding his dick now, this isn't me making a video like stop riding his dick. No, it's showing how phony and how misguided a lot of niggas are. A lot of you will not give a fellow black man the courtesy respect on his name until he start to act like a nigga. And you know that. You know it. And it's funny. Speaking of me going off and using the word nigga, like nigga please, bro, bro, on that way. So it's funny how I listen and watch Auburn preach and they have to censor out the word, uh, the G word that is, you know, someone's sexual orientation, a man, they got censor that out, that I sense out a lot more of their profanities, but the N word can go free and clear, right? You ever notice that? Anyway, it's just that ain't even related to the video, but I, I, I just noticed that. That's funny. But I'm going to end this one here. A lot of you out there in social media, a lot of brothers and sisters out there on social media are riding this. How, let's see how long it's going to take until he goes back into obscurity. Like Jaguar Wright did when she came out just naming names and situations and saying that Christopher Williams was giving Becky to freaking Diddy, which Diddy is sus. But like I said, I ain't gonna throw I ain't gonna throw mud. There ain't no mud flinging channel. It's just funny how it takes a man to shed his humbleness. And, and get down and dirty for y'all to just leave him the fuck alone. This is the type of nature it is. But like, this is why black people fight with one another so much. It ain't, it ain't, it can't just be something that just like, yo, stop talking about this dude. This dude ain't say shit. He ain't playing no more. Leave him the fuck alone. Why is he, why are you talking about him so much? It's like that kid, that, that fucking good black kid you always fuck with on his way home from school. And saying when he fuck up and he put his fucking fist through your damn stomach. Because he was watching Naruto and Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> but no, let me stop joking. When he, he show you how much nigga that he been trying to suppress inside of him. Y'all all of a sudden have a different tone. When you should have just... Fucking let him be. He ain't bothering you. He ain't doing shit to you. You should have just fucking let him be. And y'all should have let Kwame be. Let him be. Because like he said, he has some less than desirable takes on your heroes. One dead, one alive in the basketball community. And y'all wouldn't have believed it. Hell, a lot of you motherfuckers don't even think that they could be basketball players simultaneously great. Meanwhile, y'all talking about LeBron all the time and trying to diminish that the man is talented. The man has gone to every, he's won championship with every fucking team he been with, being a workhorse. And then you have some niggas be like, oh, well, they built the team around. no. They, they, look, they didn't really build that much of a team around him coming up when he was first with the Cavs. They, now, Miami had a team that they built around him. Now, they did. He went back to the Cavs. They listened this time. And then now the Lakers listened too. Getting people, but it's where he goes, he commands that type of thing. He ain't a one man pony. He ain't a one. He ain't a one. He ain't a one man show. But y'all want to call? Oh, Jordan is a one man show. Michael Jordan was never a one man show. I ain't saying he's terrible. Michael Jordan is a fucking legend. Man, I used to try to emulate that jump 
from the foul line. I had hops like that, but the fact that that was one of the most iconic things. And just that the man just exuded greatness on the court. But then I got older and I started realizing team. The team makes a whole factor. And Jordan wasn't winning shit. The Pistons were beating the fuck out of him. Beating the fuck out of him. Rodman, Joe Dumars. And all the, and the rest of them down there in Detroit were beating the fuck out of him until he got a team around him. And tell me I'm tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. But no, Jordan did this, and Jordan did that, and Jordan did it by that, and LeBron needs a team around him or something like that, and blah blah blah. And blah. no, shut up. I'm not saying that they weren't great. I'm saying. They couldn't have done it on their own. And stop acting like that. Now, is he better than Kobe Bryant? No, no, no. Is he great on his own? In his own way? You're fucking right that is. And y'all need to start respecting people like that. And why I brought up LeBron James is because this is how black people need to be with one another. You need to stop treating people who ain't about that gangster life. Like they ain't shit. Like they lame school. Especially you, a lot of you sisters out there. Y'all all there telling the dude how fucking lame he is until he gets to a level of greatness. And then all of a sudden, y'all waiting at the finish line like, Oh, I always knew you had the potential. I'm going to drop to my knees and I'm going to suck your dick. Meanwhile, you telling him that... Dick destined for potential and greatness was it worthy to be sucked because he was lame and he was a square. Get the fuck out of here, man. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. You know what? I wanted to add more to the situation. As I sit in this vehicle right now, I just hear Miss Miss Funk Master Flex up there going in. On Charlemagne also. You see what I'm talking about? There's a lot of clout chasing niggas. In the media. On social media. You name it. Nobody. Brought back up the whole situation. Until Kwame Brown brought it back up. Now. Funkmaster Flex. Because. They don't get along. And he's been salty. Over this whole situation. Of years ago. When Charlemagne Blasted him. And called him Flex Hogan. You see. The antagonistic nature I'm talking about all the time with black men. This is what they want to see us doing in the media. This is what we entertain ourselves by. This shit needs to stop. So I had to add this last piece on. It's just, it's, it's, it's just proof alone. This is the shit I be talking about. And many others be talking about it. I don't know. I have really no love for it, really. Uh, I, it, it's so... I got more important shit in my life to worry about. Especially when it comes to collectively us as black people. Anyway, y'all, for real this time, I'm out. Peace.